Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about fixed width types. Now, fixed width types are a way to potentially make your application more portable over time. That is to say, you can have a guarantee that an integer is exactly 16 bits or 32 bits or 64 bits, whatever you think the size needs to be for some particular application or the target hardware that's going to be running on. So again, this can be really important for portability and the overall maintenance of your application. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fixed width integer types here. So let's go ahead to CPP reference here, and I'm going to go ahead and look at the fundamental types here. And again, we have our fundamental types, which are more than familiar with, uh, uh, you know, integers, signed, unsigned versions of them. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a bit here, and you'll find in C++11 here, I might have to just search for it for fixed uh, with integer types here, that they sort of extended the types here. Um, now, the extended integer types are implementation defined here. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here. Um, and uh, typically, they're aliases of the other integers. So let's go ahead and bring a table here. And you can basically see it's the type uh, and of course there's signed and unsigned versions of them, the number of bits, so eight bits or one byte. Um, and then of course, um, you know, you have different versions of these. Now you also have fast and least, um, what this means. So it's this, so let's talk about fast, fastest unsigned integer type with a width of at least eight, 16, 32, or 64 bits uh, respectively. And same thing with least here. Now I personally haven't stumbled on any code in the wild that uses these types here. Um, but it is possible if you're writing an application that you want to use the like best maybe representation. I personally, uh, only use these ones here. I haven't found a good use case or something where I've measured. You'd have to measure to see if it's better. So uh, I'm just going to focus on these particular types here um, in this lesson here. And there are also fixed width uh, floating point types as well. Uh, but today we're just going to look at the uh, integer types here. So again, um, you know, I have seen some applications of like half floats and these types of things um, in gaming and shaders, for instance. Um, so, so those are something that you can take a look at here. Um, let's see. So there's a few different examples here. And again, you can check the, you know, size of whatever the uh, type is. And, you know, it should, I mean, these are good things to run a uh, static assert on. Uh, and we'll actually do that. Ensure that, you know, these are the types here. Now, the issue is, um, and it's a little bit historic here. Uh, if I go back to the types here, uh, if I look at something like an integer, it is at least, you know, 16 bytes here. Uh, typically, on 32-bit architectures, it's 32 bits. Most people just assume it's four bytes, but again, we can't assume that in C++. Some languages you can, some languages make guarantees about the integer uh, type or the short type or whatever, but again, um, it could be anything. <laughs> so, so again, uh, that's why we have the fixed width types here, okay? Uh, so we'll need to include a uh, header for this. Uh, and let's go ahead and just play around a little bit with some of these types here. Um, and again, just to show you, I, I found this example is a little bit older, but I think if you search for uh, some of the other code bases, most of the time there's just a type definition for like the 8T uh, here to one of the primitive types here. Okay, so, you know, that's what you're sort of working on, but I do want to highlight this one. I'll leave it highlighted uh, for a reason here. Uh, but let's go ahead and include the C standard uh, integer library here. We'll make a int, uh, I don't know, let's just call it uh, primitive int. And let's go ahead and make an int 32t primitive int here. Uh, and, you know, I don't know, let's, I should always assign our, you know, variable something. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that here. Um, and again, you might want to, do a few things here. And again, just to bring in a few things that we've learned previously, you might want to actually assert size of int equals four. Uh, and then we could say, you know, uh, you know, must be a 32 bit architecture or something like this here. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I redeclared this. Uh, let's call this fixed. Fixed. Uh, 32 and something like that here. Okay. Uh, so no problems here, right? Now let's say we're on an old system here where we have that, right? And then we get the static assert here. Okay. So this is a good use case of our static asserts. Make sure that everything's working here. Uh, and then, you know, this, we don't say it has to be a 32-bit architecture, but you say 
uh, needs a 32 bit fixed with type or something like that here. I don't know why we wouldn't have that here. Um, but you might also just say, hey, I'm not gonna write all this ugly code here. Uh, I just wanna make sure that, you know, <laughs> for my architecture, uh, you know, we can assume safely, or, you know, I wanted to safely assume a int is always four bytes, but I was wrong or something, right? <laughs> if that assertion fails, right? So, so you might at the least want to know about like this sort of static assertion that you can do that uh, comparison. Um, again, the compiler might be looking at what your architecture you're running on or these sorts of things here, but uh, that that's what to keep an eye on here. Now, um, where do I tend to use these fixed width types here? Okay, I tend to use them when I have, when I know the range here. So uh, when to use fixed types, uh, when I definitely know the range. Uh, example, uh, pixels. Okay, so pixels, a lot of image formats uh, have each uh, component of a pixel. That's the red, green, blue, and often alpha component. Uh, from a range of 0 to 255. Okay, a lot of color formats do that. Um, not all. Some are in floating point. Some are wider ranges. So again, you know, it just depends on the fidelity, right? If you're rendering a Pixar movie versus rendering, you know, an image from your camera or like the webcam that I have on now, right? The, the ranges could be different, right? They could be five bits for the red component. They could be 32, you know, you, you just never know. It just depends on what you're capturing. But, but anyways, that's usually an instance where if I have a pixel, for instance, uh, I would say the red value equals like 255. Uh, maybe the blue value equals, you know, five. The green value, you know, could be zero. And the alpha value, let's just say is 127 here, okay? Let's go ahead and print this out. Uh, and there's a few reasons why I wanna do this. Some of you might've already noticed the mistake that was intentional. Sometimes I leave those in, but just give me a moment to type that in. Uh, red, uh, green, try to do these in order. Although again, sometimes your pixel formats are like BGR or different things. So just keep that in mind if you're following this series or another. Uh, and alpha there. Okay, so a few interesting things here. Uh, the first thing to keep in mind here, uh, before I run this, just to prove that I think I know what I was doing, <laughs> is that this is an integer type here. I've got eight bits. What's the range here? Uh, well, let's look at our fixed, uh, you know, integer type thing here. Uh, does it give us ranges? Uh, might have to scroll down. We might need a table here or something. I don't know if it has one, uh, but... Uh, I believe we can check these uh, here. Int eight min. Uh, these are just macros, I guess. And then there should be a max here. Uh, let's actually just to, you know, because we don't get a chance to make this error. So often, let's say uh, int eight min. Okay. So let's say our int eight min. And we'll write it out. And I believe we have the corresponding max here. Okay. Which I believe should be some macro for that. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Compiled, which is great. Uh, but yeah, we get a bunch of uh, nonsense here. Okay. First thing of nonsense uh, that happened in this example. Standard int, right? What is int ht uh, type def as? I think this is true even if you go on uh, modern compilers. Uh, sign char. So that means it's treating these values as character values. And if those character values don't match up to some known ASCII character, you know, we, we're not able to print it out here. So oftentimes what I end up finding myself doing is having to cast this to an integer type here. I mean, even, even short will probably do here. Let's see if that'll work here. Uh, usually I just do int because that's what I'm used to. Um, so let's just go ahead and do short though, because that is an integer type. Uh, and that gives us some values here. Now, most of these values, you might have also noticed, second problem, are wrong. <laughs> Why is 255 represents negative one? Well, look at our min and max range here, right? So again, if you know what your range is, zero to 255, make sure that you, uh, even though you have the eight bits to represent it, you use the unsigned type here, right? 
U int. Okay. Uh, I'm highlighting this because I make this mistake all the time. My students make this mistake all the time. So it's worth highlighting. So you uh, int eight underscore T. And let's do the U. Uh, I think it'll be U int. Let's see. Max here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I guess U int eight min maybe isn't there. Oh, maybe there's just a max here. I guess, I guess it's implied it's just going to be zero so they didn't define the macro okay that makes sense <laughs> um i don't know if that's a needed or not but anyways there you go so uh so there you have the red blue green and alpha values printed out we've casted them appropriately to some integral type um and again casting them to you know the uh you know 8t 16 or whatever because basically the compiler is just rewriting that as for that particular architecture the uh known like primitive type here Okay, so that's what you get here. That's why um, uh, you do not sometimes see the value that you're writing out, especially if you're just using C out. Now, if you use format or print in a format specifier or whatever, you know that that's a reason to use like standard format and and so on. Okay, um, so there you have it. Those are the fix with types here. Um, you know, good thing to often use with static assert if you're trying to be portable, uh, and you know if you know what your ranges are. Uh, it's still a good idea to probably have a static assert here just to make sure that, you know, this is representing whatever you think your primitive type is, because uh, that's probably what it's alias to. Um, and again, this could be a way to sort of future proof your program. It's not something that you're going to have to do often. I know this is like ugly to type sometimes, but it, it really can be helpful. And especially if you're in performance domains, sometimes, you know, it's it's helpful just to show the intent of your code that you're trying to limit the range. Like if I'm using a U int 16 uh, versus a short, again, it's, it's more, it's more explicit. It's part of the documentation. So it's a good idea for these, uh, fixed with types. So anyways, folks, uh, there you have it. You have, uh, your bit count here. You have your fixed with type and, uh, as simple as that, uh, a long needed, uh, thing that's part of C++, uh, 11 standard and beyond. Uh, of course, folks, I mean, even as you're looking at this old source code, the point I'm trying to make is like, Folks have had this since like 1997, but now it's just standardized. So, um, <laughs> or even probably before 97, right? People have been doing this for a long, long, long time. Uh, so anyways, folks, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, as always, you can find more lessons on courses.mshed.io, including this C++ series here that you're watching if you want to track your progress or engage in the community otherwise. Uh, so check that out. Check out some of the other courses if you're having fun. And uh, yeah, let me know if you're using fixed with types. Let me know if you don't like using them for some reason. I know some folks don't like using them and would rather just use int uh, for everything. Um, so that's kind of an interesting discussion. I'm just kind of interested in your fundamental uh, ideas about fundamental types rather. Um, and also uh, of interest, if you're using some of the fixed with float types, that would be interesting. I've seen a little bit of it in gaming and shader and graphics programming um, where you're trading some fidelity for a speed. And that's kind of interesting, especially with like the half floats or 16 bit floats. Uh, but anyways, folks, I'll go ahead and leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.